In this step, let's create an EC2 instance and play with it. The service we would need to use to create an EC2 instance is EC2. EC2, virtual servers in the cloud. EC2 stands for Elastic Compute Cloud. And when I click EC2 service, you'd be able to see that there are no instances that are running at this point in time. So instances running is zero. Right now, I'm making use of the Mumbai region. I'm in Hyderabad, which is very, very near to Mumbai. Therefore, I'm choosing the region Mumbai, AP South 1. You can choose any of the regions which is present in here, which is nearer to you. However, make sure that once you choose a region, you choose the same region for all the demos. So let's go ahead and pick up Mumbai from here. Now, we would want to create a EC2 instance. One of the ways you can launch EC2 instances is by clicking launch instance in here. Another approach is you can go into instances and you can click a launch instance in here. Once you click launch instance, you would get a screen where you would need to fill in a lot of details regarding the EC2 instance that we would want to create. The first thing you would need to enter in here is the name. I'll call this first EC2 instance. I've zoomed in a little bit so that the screen is really clear to you. The next thing that we would need to choose is something called an AMI. An AMI is a template that contains the software configuration, basically what operating system you would want to use and what are the applications you would want to install on your EC2 instance. There are a wide variety of AMIs which are provided by AWS. What we'll do is we'll pick up Amazon Linux AWS, which is the default one which is suggested. And I'll choose Amazon Linux 2 AMI, which is the default one which is suggested in here. You can also see that this is free tier eligible. So let's choose the default AMI, which is suggested in there. The next thing you'd need to choose is the instance type. The AMI is all about software and instance type is all about hardware. What kind of hardware do you want on your EC2 instance? That's what we are choosing when we are choosing an instance type. If you click this drop down in here, you'd see that there are a wide variety of instance types that are present in AWS. You can see that each of these instance types has different amount of memory, different number of vCPUs, and they have different pricing. What I would do for now is to choose the default one which is suggested, which is T2 Micro. This comes with one virtual CPU and it comes with one gig of memory. And as you can see in here, it is free tier eligible as well. The next thing that we would need to choose is the key pair. You would want to securely connect to your EC2 instance. And the way you can securely connect to the EC2 instance is by making use of a key pair. What we'll do in here is we'll go ahead and create a new key pair. So I'll create a new key pair and I'll call this EC2 hyphen default and let's say create key pair. Once you create a key pair, it will also be downloaded onto your local machine. Make sure that you store the key pair securely because anybody who has the key pair will be able to connect to your EC2 instance. I'll say I love and I'll download the key pair. And over here, you can see that EC2 default key pair is chosen by default. So that looks good. The next thing we would need to configure is the network settings. As part of these network settings, one of the most important things that we would need to configure is a security group. A security group is a firewall. Basically, you can control what traffic is allowed into your instance and what traffic can be going out from your EC2 instance. What we'll do in here is to create a new security group. And what I would want to do is to allow SSH traffic from anywhere. Whenever I would want to connect to the EC2 instance, I would need to SSH into it. So I would want to allow only SSH into my EC2 instance. That's the only thing I'm allowing as part of my security group. The last thing we would want to configure is the storage that needs to be attached to my EC2 instance. I'll take the defaults for the storage as well. We are attaching a 8 GB general purpose root volume with our EC2 instance. Let's quickly review some of the important details that we have configured until now. We would want to create one EC2 instance. We are making use of the Amazon Linux 2 kernel 5.10 AMI. And AMI is nothing but the operating system and the applications that you would want on your EC2 instance. We chose the instance type as T2 Micro. Instance type helps you in choosing what kind of hardware you would want for your EC2 instance. How many vCPUs, how much memory you would want, what kind of IO speed you would want. 
You can choose all that by choosing the instance type. The next thing we configured is a security group. Security group is a firewall. This controls what traffic is allowed into your EC2 instance and what traffic can go outside your EC2 instance. We also attached a root volume of size 8 GB. Let's go ahead and launch this instance. You can see that it says successfully initiated the launch of this specific instance. What I can do is I can click that specific instance in here. So when I click that, a new page would open up where I'll be able to see that specific instance. Right now, you can see that the instance state of that is pending. If you give it a few minutes, you would see that the instance state would shift to running. Now, what I would want to do is I would want to be able to connect to this EC2 instance and I would want to be able to execute a few commands against it. How can I do that? That's where you can select this and you can click connect. There are multiple approaches to connecting to your EC2 instance. What we'll do is we'll make use of EC2 instance connect. The default username is EC2 hyphen user. So you can take the default username and you can say connect. And within a little while, you should see that a new tab opens up where you can go ahead and type in a few commands. I'll go in here and type in who am I? EC2 hyphen user. I can go in and type in hy Python hyphen hyphen version. You can see that Python 2.7.18 is already installed on this specific EC2 instance. If you want, you can go ahead and install any software that you'd want on this EC2 instance. For example, if you want to install Java or Node.js, or if you want, or if you want to install Go, you can go ahead and install it on this specific EC2 instance. One of the most important things that you need to understand is the power of what you are doing right now. With a click of few buttons, we were able to launch a virtual server, and we were able to very very easily connect to it. And we are now able to execute commands. And if you want, we can go ahead and install software in it and play with it. That's the power of cloud. You can get access to powerful infrastructure with a click of few buttons. Let's close this window down and let's go back to our EC2 instance. So I'll go back to EC2 instances. And you can see that right now we have one instance running. And if I click the instance ID, I can see all the details about this EC2 instance. You can see that this EC2 instance has an instance ID. The ID is what is used to uniquely identify this EC2 instance. The EC2 instance by default is also assigned a public IP address. If you install an application on the EC2 instance, you can use this public IP address to access that specific application. The EC2 instance is also assigned a private IP address as well. This IP address is only available inside the network in which the EC2 instance is created. You can see that the current state of EC2 instance is running. You can also see that the instance type of this is T2 micro. Now, there are a number of operations that you can perform on your EC2 instance. If you go to instance state, you can stop the instance. You can reboot the instance, basically restart the instance, or you can terminate the instance. Stopping the instance would only temporarily stop the instance. You, you can go ahead and start it at a later point in time. But if you terminate the instance, the instance will be completely deleted. You'll not be able to restart it again. If you scroll down in here, you'll be able to see a lot more details about the EC2 instance. You can see that we are making use of Amazon Linux. You can see the AMI ID or we can see the AMI ID or the Amazon machine image ID that we are making use of. You can also see the key pair details and a lot of other details regarding this EC2 instance. If you go over to security, you'd be able to see the details of the security group that we have configured. Earlier, when creating our EC2 instance, we said we would want to allow SSH traffic. And that's why you can see that in the security group, it allows traffic on port 22. If you go over to networking, you can see the networking details of this EC2 instance. You can see the public IP address, private IP address, you can also see the VPC and the subnet details in here. VPC and subnets allow you to create your own private network in the cloud. We'll talk about VPCs and subnets a little later in the course. If you go to storage, over here you can see that there is a hard disk or a virtual drive which is attached with your EC2 instance. 
when we created our EC2 instance, we chose that we would want a 8 GB hard disk to be attached. You can see the details of it in here. In status checks, you can see the current status of your EC2 instance. You can see that all the system status checks are passing. And also you can see that the instance status checks are also passing. If you go to monitoring, you can look at all the metrics related to our EC2 instance. You can see the CPU utilization. You can see the status of the status checks. You can see how much network traffic is coming in and how much network traffic is going out. You can see the details of disk reads, disk writes. So if you want to look at metrics related to your EC2 instance, you can come to the monitoring tab. In AWS, the service which tracks your metrics is CloudWatch. So what's happening is your EC2 instance would send all the metrics to CloudWatch. And these are the metrics you are seeing in here. And you can also attach tags with your EC2 instance. You can see that there is a tag which is already created, name EC2 instance. What I would want is I would want to add more tags. So I'll go to manage tags and I would want to add a new tag. I'll call this environment. I'll add a tag called environment and let's say dev. And I'll also add a tag called business unit. And let's call this business unit A. Tags are really, really useful in associating a specific resource in the cloud with, let's say, an environment or a business unit. Whenever you are working for a large enterprise, you'd want to be able to identify which resource belongs to which business unit or which environment so that you can associate costs with that specific environment or that specific business unit. So let's go ahead and save this. In this step, we were able to create our first EC2 instance. We were able to connect to it using Instance Connect. We were able to execute a few commands against it. And we saw that there are a lot of things that you can do with your EC2 instance. Before we end this step, what I would want to do is to terminate this specific EC2 instance. In the cloud, you don't want to leave the resources running for a long time. The best practice in the cloud is to always terminate the resources after you play with them. So what I'll do is I'll select this. I'd go to instance state and I would say terminate instance. I'd go ahead and say terminate. We have kickstarted the termination of this EC2 instance. The termination of the EC2 instance will take a little while. I would recommend you to take a break and I'll see you on.